political shift coming from the United States as US President Joe Biden accepting reality drops out from a rematch with Donald Trump to secure a second term. After President Joe Biden ended his re-election bid and endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris to succeed him, the president said that he will finish his term and will address America later this week. Vice President Harris said that she's honored to receive Biden's endorsement and vowed to earn and win the nomination. Harris could be the first black woman and first Asian American to lead the ticket of a major political party. Despite Biden's backing, it remains unclear whether Harris will become the nominee or what process the Democratic Party will take to select an alternative. Is America in disarray? And what does this mean for the rest of the world? We'll break all that down for you next. This is a special report. President Joe Biden quitting re-election on the road to the White House. Now, reporting live from Studio 24, here's Mahesh Jani. A very good evening, uh, good afternoon rather, and welcome to our special live coverage of the U.S. presidential election on the road to the White House. Uh, as we come on the air, this is a new world. As within two weeks, back to back, news from the United States has completely upended world politics and now has overshadowed all elections across the world. I mean, I thought when we knew that it was going to be um, a rematch between 81-year-old Joe Biden and 78-year-old Donald Trump, this was going to be a very boring race. Ended his Boy, was I wrong. Now, about a week ago, former President Trump took a bullet to his face and then walked out of it heroically and went and had one of the most successful party conventions in modern U.S. history. And this week, Joe Biden, the incumbent U.S. president, after saying that he's going to fight on for another four years, hours ago, ended his race. Now, here's a look at the events that unfolded in the past few hours. U.S. President Joe Biden has ended his faltering re-election bid. In a post on X, the 81-year-old said he would stay in his role as president and commander-in-chief until his term ends in January. It has been the greatest honor of my life to serve as your president, he said, while adding, I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down. He also endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris to replace him as the party's candidate. They just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers. There's been a wave of public and private pressure from Democratic lawmakers and party officials for him to quit after his shockingly poor performance in a televised debate last month against Donald Trump, his Republican rival. If we finally beat Medicare. It took the spotlight away from Trump's false statements and put it squarely on Biden's fitness for another four-year term. All his donors began to revolt. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. Other gaffes at a NATO summit did not help either. He invoked Russian President Vladimir Putin's name when he meant Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and called Harris Vice President Trump. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be Vice President. When you get knocked down, you get back up. Biden initially resisted pressure to step aside and sat down for rare television interviews. But polls showed Trump's lead in key battleground states widening, and Democrats began to fear a wipeout in the House and Senate. Just days ago, Biden was diagnosed with COVID-19. For his part, Trump told CNN on Sunday that he believed Harris would be easier to defeat in the November 5th election. In a hypothetical head-to-head matchup, Harris and Trump were tied with 44 percent support each in a July 15th and 16th Reuters-Ipsos poll conducted immediately after the assassination attempt against Trump. Trump led Biden 43 percent to 41 percent in that same poll, though the two percentage point difference was within the poll's three percentage point margin of error. And Harris's approval ratings, while low, are a tick higher than Biden's. 
But despite earning praise in the last few weeks for her strong defense of Biden, some Democrats remain concerned about Harris's shaky first two years in office, short-lived campaign for the 2020 Democratic nomination, and, perhaps most of all, the weight of a long history of racial and gender discrimination in the United States. It's unclear whether other senior Democrats might challenge Harris for the nomination or if the party would choose to open the field for nominations. Biden is the first sitting president to give up his party's nomination for re-election since President Lyndon Johnson in 1968. And it leaves his replacement with less than four months to wage a campaign. What a campaign uh, it has been, and there is more to go up until November. What's going to happen in the convention, uh, the Democratic uh, National Convention? That is where um, Joe Biden is all, already the presumptive nominee of the Democratic Party. Now he has resigned, saying that he no longer wants to seek re-election. So what's going to happen? What's going to happen to those delegates? There are conversations about the fact that apparently this is going to be an open convention, which means any delegate can basically give their vote to any candidate who's asking for a vote there. Will there be challenges? Now, that's a good question to see. You, last week, you saw the uh, Republican National Convention, one of the uh, best conventions that apparently that was there in uh, the U.S. history. Why? Donald Trump managed to bring every single person back into the party and unite the party. Now, the Democratic National Convention, now that's going to be very interesting as well. Will there be challenges to Vice President Kamala Harris? Those um, uh, matters need to be ironed out. And basically, uh, uh, we really need to understand how this is going to proceed. There is conversation that Kamala Harris, despite the fact that she's right there behind us, where we have to put her picture as a presumptive nominee, she might not be the nominee. There could be another third party candidate who might take that place if the Democratic Party and the Democratic National Convention decides Kamala Harris would not be able to beat Donald Trump in November. Let's take a short commercial break. When we return, my panel will be here, former Foreign Minister Sarah Thamugama and also uh, Attorney at Law Udara De Soisa. We'll be right back. This is our special report on the U.S. presidential election on the road to the White House. Welcome back, everyone, to our special coverage uh, on uh, um, the road to the White House. Uh, incumbent President Joe Biden apparently uh, misses out and he is stepping down, saying that he cannot be the nominee uh, and make sure that he fight against Trump. Simply, uh, simply put, uh, this, comes, this news comes after uh, polling in Michigan came out now. I'm back with my panel, Dr. Uh, Sarata Murugama, uh, our former foreign minister, and also Dr. Udara Di uh, the head of um, Bandaranaike International, uh, Center for International Studies, uh, not the head, uh, the person who's in charge of uh, public, uh, public, pub national law. public uh, uh, law. Uh, welcome back. We were just here talking about the debate two weeks back. And I was with uh, Dr. Uh, Amurugama, I think, on a Sunday when Trump got uh, shot. This election is becoming very interesting, gentlemen, and it's 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 uh, it, it's like a, a soap opera that is uh, uh, coming from uh, the Latino countries. Uh, Doctor, let me start off with you. Biden was on on, on the fact saying, "No, I'm not going to step down. I am going to continuously fight. And if you want to challenge me, uh, come to the polls and uh, at the convention and challenge me there." Suddenly, within hours, this changes. How do you see it? who's so strong enough to do a change such as that? Because it is very detrimental to the Democratic Party. Firstly, Mahesh, I think we can deconstruct uh, Biden's own statement. That is the closest we get to the facts. The first is, he says, I'm going to continue till the end of my term. Yeah. There, there was the option of an immediate resignation and then handing over power to uh, uh, Kamala Harris, but he opted in keeping with the tone of what he has been 
saying all along that he will continue up to November and it, and try to pursue his agenda up to November. So that's the first takeaway. The second is his uh, very warm and strong endorsement of Kamala Harris. He had the option of keeping quiet or throwing it open to the convention to find a person, uh, lots of options, but he has now very firmly uh, planted his flag in the uh, Kamala Harris camp. And number three is that uh, he has now presented his decision as a, a sort of uh, big dedication to the future of the country, the future of the party, future of the people and so on, not as a uh, consequence of various infirmities that he had. Mm -hmm. So th that is the uh, deconstruction we can make on his immediate statement. But behind it, of course, as you mentioned, we must find out what were the political forces that uh, made, him, made him take this decision. Uh, lately, uh, we had a mounting number of democratic congressmen and senators. Say, Is it his age? No, not age. Age, because at the beginning when all these people were talking about the presidency, they didn't raise the question of Biden's age. But main main problem was that as we discussed last time after the debate the media coverage yeah. of Biden changed completely and today there is a <coughs> debate in America as to whether the liberal media had been covering up and not depicting the true state of this man earlier but the answer to your question is that the crescendo of uh, congressmen and senators saying that their own chances will be badly affected yeah. uh, was joined by two powerful persons. One is Nancy Pelosi, who handled the Senate and the Congress earlier, and of course Obama. So one, one could uh, surmise that it was the decisive intervention of three categories, the, their own local political representatives, that Nancy Pelosi and Obama coming together, which left very little option for Biden, but to step down. Uh, let me come to you, uh, um, Dr. Uh, Udara, um, who is uh, the attorney at law, who is an attorney at law, and also uh, the head lecturer at Bandana Center for International Studies. Uh, you are also the analyst at Jimmy Carter Research Center. You know a lot of, about the uh, intricacies of uh, the United States politics and things like that. But you are an attorney at law, and let me ask you this question. Now, the argument the Democrats have been making against Donald Trump is that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy. And democracy is majority rules, basically, you know, uh, if, if you put it in a nutshell. Joe Biden was voted in by the party. He was not, he didn't take it, uh, you know, it was not a, 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 a ceremony where he was coronated uh, uh, as the, the nominee of the party. He was voted in the primaries took place, people, uh, the, the members of the Democratic Party took part in that election and they basically came and gave their vote. Now the Democratic Party say that vote doesn't count because apparently we can't beat Donald Trump so we need someone else completely throwing out that entire election that they uh, had with, with, with the primary process. How is that not the real th threat to democracy uh, where you completely disregard because someone can argue, let's say it's Kamala Harris and another person, as soon as Kamala Harris wins, if, if there is a big if there, but if she does, the Democratic Party can say, well, Kamala is not suitable, Maybe he need, she needs to step down and the Vice President will be the uh, President. This particular confusion is now completely hanging over the Democratic Party. So, explaining a little bit, um, whether uh, Kamala Harris win this election is, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's to be uh, honest, close to a miracle at this point, looking at all kind of uh, all kind of uh, pollings. Survey, pollings and survey information that you can see. But apart from that, Mahesh, uh, how the election process works in US is very different to our system. Yeah. As you said, it works through uh, like a, almost like a super democratic manner, where the parties 
do not pick but rather vote vote through their the the registered voter so you have in US you have people who are registered as independent registered as democrats and registered as republican so if you are registered as a democrat you have the right to vote in a primary to select whoever you want to run for the president so the nominee is also voted in right correct so that this is like very different level of democracy that we are discussing here so one of the re- i mean now you will see probably in the next debate whether for president trump will in fact vote vice president harris with the argument put forward that she is not a legitimate yeah candidate so yes indeed i think this will uh, hang over the shadows and uh, however i think for any democrat to challenge her at this point would be political suicide i i, I did see why do you say that uh, because i think that the, Demo- the, the, the the democratic establishment is forcing her to be the the new face but if the, you if you actually look yeah. at it uh, um, doctor that she is not a good candidate uh, if if you look at the rest of the pack in the democratic party there are really good <coughs> candidates who can actually be donald trump and polling says so but here we have kamala harris completely uh, you know screwed up the entire vice presidency gave a very bad name for women uh, and also black uh, uh, community uh, Amer- uh, african americans and even uh, african asians so in a situation like that how can the democratic party say she's the one the answer is democratic party has lost its sense in terms of what's happening in the ground so i think this is one of the reasons why the party has come to what it is now as i think they have lost that sense with the with the normal people and i think the party is putting what the party wants yeah not necessarily what the people want the supporters want so i think this will be interesting and almost like political suicide for democratic party to go in this journey and i think uh, you know the soap opera is you know just to unfold uh, the uh, the uh, the convention is coming in i think uh, uh, in 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 early august you think it's going to be dramatic there as well no you see the infrastructure of a candidate for the american presidency is very crucial now biden had built up for example the donor the donors list then he had got for example uh, through the primaries he had secured the consent of a majority of people who would have given him the nomination at the convention so there is an established procedure which in a, it, to be fair Kamala Harris can uh, inherit easily for another person however popular he or she may be it will not be easy for them to come and take to grab hold of that whole infrastructure which has been evolved actually from the time that Biden became president especially the donors the first attack on Biden's plans to come back next year Uh, was this the donors the donors starting with the Walt Disney yeah, yeah said yeah. we are not going to give money to him so that was a very important thing so i don't so, know whether uh, doctor who's running the democratic uh, party because it doesn't look like it is the members of the people of the democratic party no, but it looks but like the hierarchy and, and and a very few uh, wealthy billionaires no it's the same with the republican party well, soon after the Uh, the debate and certainly after the shooting the funding for the republican campaign has gone up astronomically yes. astronomically but as doctor said the the american system is very democratic in the sense that you have to get through the primaries so primaries are voted so, on so by doctor, by their my, members my argument i am putting that argument to you as well yeah. that democratic process is neglected right now by the hierarchy of the democratic party and when when uh, this question was raised by uh, um, many uh, journalists uh, american journalists uh, from the um, uh, what do you call the democratic party itself the members of it what they said what well 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 we are going to go into for a com- uh, convention and anybody can apply anybody can uh, basically uh, ask for why for power and if by any chance the convention selects So what was the reason we had the primaries there was no reason to have the primaries we could have done this and saved a lot of money no no that's not correct because in the convention the 
presidential nominee declares the vice president. As it happened now in the Republican case, J.D. Vance was nominated at the convention by Trump. So then the convention agrees to it by acclamation. In rare cases, maybe the convention can throw that person out. But whoever is vice president has the full support of all those people who gather at the convention. So really the slate, what is called the president and vice president, that slate has the full endorsement of the party through the convention. Uh, uh, Dr. Zara, do you think there is going to be a legal battle as soon as the convention comes into play and if by any chance there isn't, there isn't a clear candidate and a super majority or a majority uh, is being won by either Kamala Harris or anybody who is vying for power, do you think it's going to you know, drag on or do you think the Democratic Party is actually united behind Kamala Harris? I mean, in terms of law, I don't think so. I don't think this will go to that level. Uh, mostly because I think um, I, I'm seeing the fact that Democratic Party and the donors, the funding, fund, funding community of the DNC has made up their minds. And um, except maybe for some, like mm -hmm. the West Virginia uh, Senator Joe Manchester, few people, other than a few people, nobody is really actually standing up against Kamala Harris. If you look at the social media, you can see the majority of the people are just throwing behind uh, Vice President Harris. So I think it will be very unlikely. But uh, like uh, Dr. Amunagama said, I mean, this, uh, the outcome <laughs> will, uh, will be not as what uh, DNC probably would want. And uh, I think earlier uh, Dr. was saying that, you know, with the, with the polling numbers now, maybe what if he pulls up around 100, uh, when compared to 300 of 4% uh, Trump, this will be a landslide for uh, former president and this will be quite bad for the Democratic Party. Uh, talking about landslides, uh, again, uh, Dr. Abunagama, not to uh, talk about your age, but apparently I've been, when I was watching a lot of American television since last night uh, when this incident, uh, uh, when this uh, announcement occurred, they were comparing this to the 1968 convention where um, I think uh, Ronald Reagan had a landslide. Uh, he was a Republican nominee, but the Democrats, uh, um, the president, incumbent president at that moment, also decided I'm not going to seek re-election, uh, let somebody else do it. But it was nothing to do with health or anything. He just decided the pollings were saying that he's not going to win. So there's a similar situation here and everybody was comparing this too. And at that moment, uh, that particular uh, uh, Republican candidate, Ronald Reagan, uh, won that election in a landslide. Do you think that is exactly, not exactly per se, but is there similarities of that? Do you think if the DNC does not get a right candidate that is viable for the people and to uh, uh, unify the party, it's going to be a landslide for Trump? Yeah, the polls, I looked at the polls last night, they are clearly showing that uh, Trump will win by a landslide. Over 300 votes in the electoral college but there is another factor. Uh, Kamala Harris is also a symbol. She's a woman and she's a black woman. So Asian woman as well. Asian South Asian. Woman, but, but generally coming under the category of black. So no democratic party will try to find a person who will alienate that huge block, which is I think 70-80% uh, democratic. That is like a base of the democratic party. So, win or lose, when they think of, actually what they are now gambling about is what is going to happen to the congressional elections, mm. what is going to happen to Senate. the Senate elections. Because they are very jealous, like I, I suppose, like our old MPs, <laughs> they want to be returned. Primary, the first primary concern is to get back to the Congress or to the House. Yeah. So, they are, now they concluded, if it's Biden, we've had it, you know. So now they dare not shift that black women uh, caucus, that support, which will mean that the consequences will be far worse than having Kamala Harris there when it comes to the domestic scene of their local state elections. I'm going to ask a, a question before we take a break. Um, Dr. Dara, do you believe the polls? Sorry? Do you believe the polls? 
Um, because I, there was I, a situation I, 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 just I, I, like I, this I, in 2016 I, I, where every single poll said Trump will never win. And here we are now telling the other, other side of I'm that sorry. story. So, uh, uh, I think largely the polls have been accurate when it comes to US elections except for 2016. 2016, which was everybody the, got it wrong. The nightmare for all the pollsters, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, however, however, I think it was obvious that President Biden was not an attractive candidate anymore. And um, in my opinion, I'm not really sure whether he did the right thing or wrong thing because looking at the option that is to replace him uh, doesn't look that better either. Yeah, so because a, it doesn't a, look democratic at all. Uh, and it's like a lose-lose situation for well, the DNC at this point. Uh, let's take a short commercial break. Uh, you're watching uh, our special report on the US presidential uh, election uh, on the road to the White House. There's a massive uh, uh, development that came last night, uh, late last night, where uh, the incumbent president, Joe Biden, said that he is not seeking re-election. And our conversation is uh, basically staring around that. Uh, we'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to our special coverage, the special report on the U.S. presidential election on the road to the White House. Joe Biden is not asking for a second term. He's going to be a one-term president this time around. It's nothing to do with the fact that he doesn't want to. It's just the polls are telling him that he can't make it through. So there is a problem there. And right now, the Democratic Party is so much, despite the fact that a lot of people are saying, you know, they're united, they have Kamala Harris, and they will get everything sorted out. That's, well, we have to wait and see. My panel uh, today is uh, Dr. Sarah Tamadugama, our former foreign minister, and also Dr. Udara Soisa, attorney at law, who is uh, a lecturer uh, for public international law at the Bandaranaika Center for International Studies. I hope I got that right. Yes. Last time around, I said you're the head. Apparently, you're not the head. Uh, but <laughs> uh, apologies there. No worries. Uh, but uh, so let's uh, uh, continue, uh, uh, Dr. Amurugama. Uh, mm -hmm. This time around, Trump, when you look at the uh, Republican National Convention, it was very successful for Trump. Uh, he came out after a shooting. He did not like, you know, hide and uh, basically went in like what Biden did uh, when he got COVID. Uh, he came back into the convention, rallied the party, got the party very excited. The entire atmosphere was like electrifying. Everybody was comparing the convention to 2008 uh, Obama's convention. Uh, in a situation like that, they were pitching the entire story to the American people that Biden was bad. Now, in a situation where Kamala Harris takes uh, the head of the ticket, do you think they have they uh, completely have to redo the whole uh, process, or if not, they just go on with what they have? Well, Trump is on a roll. You know, uh, there was a headline in a American newspaper: they shot at Trump, <laughs> but killed by. <laughs> Yes, you know? yes. So everything is going his way. <laughs> he survived that attack, did very well in the debate, and of all things, for the incumbent president to get COVID yeah. at, the, at the key moment in the campaign. So all that has created this problem. And what commentators say is that Trump, at least in the first part of his uh, speech, he tried to get to, to middle ground because everything uh, says that He's going to be the next president. He should not take extreme positions just now to try to get, so in other words, what they call the big tent. Yeah. The, the big tent policy. It will make the party into a big tent into which all sorts of categories of people can come. But that's going to be a problematic effort because they don't have time to get everybody unified uh, behind one single candidate and they must, the Democratic Party per se. No, the Democratic Party is going to have a terrible time. They, ha they are going to have a terrible time. And uh, with Kamala Harris, uh, they are in a bind because symbolically she stands for 
the type of vote base that Democrats are trying to build up. But personally, she is not going to uh, get to very many extra votes. And the other thing is, she is from California. California yeah. is a sure Heavily, state. Yeah, exactly. Whoever comes with the Democratic uh, cap on, on, his, on his or her head gets that. And yesterday I was listening to some commentary. She is totally unknown in the Rust Belt, virtually yes. unknown. You know, unknown in the South, unknown in the Rust Belt, unknown in uh, the New England, Connecticut, that part of the traditional, you know, intellectual mm. area. So she has to go entirely on the democratic setup rather than any name recognition of herself. But what what is her strong point is that she's a woman and she's black. So those two will give her some some leverage. But, but not Dr. enough to win, I think. A lot of rep reports continues to say that she's not that uh, liked within the uh, African American community. Uh, they basically despise her because of the simple fact that she did not do a good job. And uh, as a, a attorney general in California prior to this entire gig, um, she used to put a lot of people, uh, a lot of black people, in in prison, and, no, and that, 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 that the, went bad for her. No, that's the personal factor. But when she comes from the Democratic Party, she inherits a, a large swath of votes because that, that's a Democratic, uh, what you call the base vote of the Democratic Party. You see, today Americans in America, the Democrats and the Republicans have what is called the base vote. In Sri Lanka also, we don't, we don't think of the base vote and the majority vote. So every emphasis is on the base vote. So that base vote for the Democrats is still there, I mean, but not enough in terms of the American system of the college and things like that to put her over the top. So it looks very, very, very much, unless something very drastic happens, that Trump will be the next president. Uh, Dr. Dara, with regard to what the game plan for the Democratic Party right now, there, uh, what do you think? Because they have to first get their house in order before they go and start hammering uh, by, uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump is not just a, 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 you know a, a sheep. He's a, he's, a, he's a, he will bulldoze everything. So you got to get your game plan right. You got to know what the messaging is. It has to be accurate. It has to be, uh, you know basically r rally the entire base of the Democratic Party plus the undecided because they, they will be the one. Do you think it's a doable uh, fact? Highly unlikely, and I tell you why. Now, for example, after the assassination attempt on former President Trump, I think the whole rhetoric was told to be you know, lowered, not to call him. Yeah, oh, yeah. Gaddafi, or you know, any of this damn call it because, for example, this is that would not be the popular thing to do. So, by giving that level of sympathetic respect for him, President Trump, and almost like fighting a campaign with one. You know, I, I would I would say like fighting a boxing match with both hands behind your back. You know, having this uh, victim of an assassination attempt running in one side, and you have the other main candidate, the current president, stepping down mm. uh, at a crucial time, a few months before the the real deal. I think this is a very uphill task for the for the party. Do you think it's they did that, like the seniors of the party, if you look at uh, um, Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, the seniors of the party, the ones who Pelosi. have actually been uh, Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, uh, everybody was more focusing on the Congress and the Senate, understanding the fact that the presidency is gone. Uh, the polling, in, I mean, none of the candidates have the ability to go against Trump and win. None of the pollings are saying that. So in a situation like that, uh, do you think that they were more focusing on saving the Congress and saving the Senate? Could be, and I'll tell you why also. Now, there could be more than three Supreme Court seats mm. vacant within this next term. So if Democrats are able to have the majority in the House and the Senate, they may be able to block some of these candidates because if you look at yeah. the, 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 the system, you need to have the Senate approval. So, Perhaps that might be something because if Democrats lose the President, Senate and the House, ultimately Trump will get a free ride 
within those four years. So I think this could be the B plan, which is might be the plan right now, as mm -hmm. Professor uh, uh, Dr. Amarukumar said. Um, they shot at one person and somebody else got killed, right? And this is uh, almost like a foregone conclusion, in, if you ask me, at this point, unless something extremely crazy happens. I, I keep hearing that uh, from both of you gentlemen, uh, you know, something extremely goes wrong. What do you think, uh, Dr. Amurugama, uh, what could go wrong for Trump at this moment? Well, I, I, as far as I can see, nothing can go wrong for him <laughs> at this stage. Uh, but as you rightly said, uh, doctor, the game will be in the selection of the Congress and the Senate. That will be the last ditch. And I anticipate people like uh, Obama and mm. all their stars concentrating on this, that. There is also another school of opinion which is that if Michelle Obama can be drafted, you know the convention has a power of drafting people. Mm. They need not come through this Whole, uh, but she continuously say yeah, she doesn't want. She, she has denied. She has denied. But logically, if at least a, a fight is to be given, because then that black woman, that category which cannot be touched as far as the Democrats are concerned, that problem also will be overcome. So, looking from outside, uh, it's going to be a terrible debacle for the Democratic Party. The only way they can even have a shot at it is to bring someone like Michelle Obama. Dr. Dara, do you think for Kamala Harris, the race factor and the fact that she's a woman is going to be a burden or a plus point? I think it will become almost irrelevant. I tell you. Now, if you look at the statistics of her conviction while she was the prosecutor, you don't I mean, her basic fighting kind, ability and the focus has made her almost a villain and almost evil among the same community that she claimed to represent. And when you look at Obama, for example, you know, who had a civil rights background, mm -hmm. where you actually fought for the rights of the community versus somebody who played a prosecutor's role and putting people behind the bars, right? You don't see that level of charisma. She doesn't look, the optics of Vice President Harris is not preferable and I in fact last night I was talking to some of my friends from uh, who work with us at Jimmy Carter Center and they were telling like you know this is suicide you cannot unless she picks some amazing uh, I don't know who this amazing person is <laughs> uh, uh, VP I think this uh, road is close at a very bad level uh, I understand uh, when you say that her entire image is very bad uh, in comparison to Barack Obama you just have to uh, look at those clips where he she loves maniacally and then everybody understands well we are uh, doomed at the moment uh, I want to understand exactly what the Democratic uh, Party and the Democrats uh, they are uh, thinking about a possible uh, nomination not um, uh, for uh, Kamala Harris the vice president of the United States Joe Biden al already said that he she he's endorsing her and uh, there are lots of other members also have endorsed her but it is at the convention it will become the law of the land and she would be the nominee of the uh, Democratic Party. We still don't know how that convention will uh, go by but it's going to be a very interesting one. So uh, what do the Democrats uh, think about this? Um, our uh, other than a special correspondent uh, who is in uh, Toronto, Canada, uh, fo is following that story, and she filed this report, Suzanne Chenali. For Democratic voters who have spent much of the summer brooding about President Biden's fitness for office, his decision not to seek re-election came as a relief. Now, they figured their political party might stand a chance in November, though many still expressed deep doubts. Some voters even went as far to say they were absolutely overjoyed about Biden's announcement. Just last weekend, many of these voters participated in a demonstration outside of the Ohio Democratic Party convention calling for Biden to step aside, stating that if Biden had stayed in, the party would have lost absolutely everything, echoing the feelings of many Democrats. There were specific fears on losing the House, the Senate and the potential for a landslide win for the other camp. 
The delicate subjects of whether Biden, who is 81 years of age, was fit for another term and how long he might stay in the race after his disastrous debate performance last month had found their way into conversations at dinner parties, neighborhood parks and church gatherings. The end of Biden's candidacy shifted some Democrats' emotions from profound anxiety to hopeful determination, even if what comes next for their party remains unclear. There was also plenty of resignation to the idea that no Democrat might be able to pull off a victory against former President Donald J. Trump. All in all, Biden's endorsement of Vice President Kamala Harris to replace him on the ticket drew quick support from some voters eager to chart a path forward. But underscoring the party's tumult, others were certain that Harris, whose own presidential campaign four years ago fizzled, would face ugly attacks and rejection. Over to you, Maish. Thank you very much. That was Suzanne Shanali, other than a World News Special Correspondent reporting from Toronto, Canada. Let's take a short commercial break. Let's uh, talk uh, right after the break. Let's talk about the VP nominee for Kamala Harris, who could actually make a ticket that is formidable and that will be able to take on Donald Trump and JD Vance. That duo seems to be um, riding a very high wave right now un unless there's like like these gentlemen said uh, something really bad happens prior to the elections you're watching a special report uh, on uh, the u.s presidential election on the road to the white house we'll be right back Welcome back, everyone, to our special report on the uh, U.S. presidential election on the road to the White House. We've been talking uh, about how um, the events that unfolded a few hours ago with regard to uh, the uh, announcement of uh, Joe Biden, who said that he is not seeking re-election. He's going to be a one-term president. Uh, along with me uh, this afternoon is uh, Dr. Sarah Guma, our former uh, foreign minister, and also Dr. Udara Sovisa, attorney at law, uh, who is a lecturer for public international law at the Bandaranaika Center for International Studies. Uh, gentlemen, uh, this is our last few um, minutes uh, of the program. Uh, let me start with you, um, Dr. Udara. In terms of this, uh, uh, this entire uh, election, it comes down to the Electoral College, which is a very funny thing in, in, in American system. Uh, in, if you look at Sri Lankan uh, uh, elections, basically the guy who gets 51% <coughs> plus one, uh, sorry, 50% plus one is the winner. So popular vote is the, uh, uh, the key. We are very democratic in that manner. But in an instance of the United States, Electoral College, and, uh, which is very confusing to a lot of people, uh, despite the fact that you get the most number of popular votes, you still might not be the winner, which, is, which was the case, uh, as you pointed out earlier on uh, in 2016. Uh, Hillary Clinton had uh, more po votes, but did not win the Electoral College. Do you think uh, that particular entire system is very democratic? It is more Republican and also very federal. If you look at the history of US, it, from 13th state to 50th states, you, you can see it was in, in reality never meant to be a single country like Sri Lanka or India. Right? <coughs> it's, it's a very, early it was before the, the civil war, it was actually loosely connected federal system. And now it has come to a point of almost like a modern 21st century state. Uh, it was never meant to have a democratic tradition like a normal state does and one of the worries that the founding fathers of US had was for the you know, almost like a dictatorship of the popul hmm. populism of uh, the entire uh, all the states so rather than you know giving that option uh, for the votes to interconnect between states so they have given it to each state right to decide and ultimately they will put their nominees right and uh, that's how ultimately the election uh, will run. In a situation like that, if the founding fathers are, of America was not projecting the fact that you know populism is, is you know that's bad, Trump kind of broke that rule, and he's very popular in all uh, the states, and he's very well known. So 
that argument doesn't actually uh, continues no, to be but what, what I mean to say no I mean like yeah. in, in American Constitution uh, uh, like if you look at India India is really a democracy uh, where they have months and months of elections and finally the popular vote wins uh, here in Sri Lanka also should America must be looking in a different Not necessarily if you look at the population of the California for example if you look at the numbers I think there are more Democrats than Republicans but they are centered in certain key district, key, key states like California, etc. So just having those numbers in those states wouldn't help. Now in Sri Lanka, if that was the case, yeah. you're still going to have all of them collected and the proportional system will push the candidate through. But that is that was never something that was meant within the US Constitution at any, any level. Uh, Dr. Manugama, with regard to the vice presidential pick for Kamala Harris, uh, if we hypothetically think uh, if Kamala Harris is the nominee of the Democratic Party and is going head to head with Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, uh, who is a, a very popular senator in, from Ohio, um, who should she be picking? Is it, should someone from the Rust Belt area or someone who can actually add a more popular uh, water base to her candidacy. Do you think uh, there are good people on that particular front well, in I the think, Democratic Party? I think we can get some indication from the way Trump tackled that situation. He found that the, the Rust Belt, you know, that's Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, or that three, three states, and Michigan. Michigan. Uh, that is crucial for him because he had to break through that what was called the Blue Wall. So, his vice presidential candidate once is a person who can influence this belt. He's from Ohio, but closest to the other things. And his background as a sort of very poor man who worked hard, he was a Marine, all that attracts that category. So that, and actually the polls are showing that that has put Trump over the top. And he's very young also. Yeah, young, uh, very attractive in, in that category. So I think it was a good gel, you know, they got together well. So similarly, this one will have to, uh, Kamala Harris or whoever comes, will have to balance the ticket. It's called balancing the ticket. You always have to balance the ticket. And that suggests that they will have to take something not from the solid democratic, you know, California, this, there's no point, she's already from California. That is a safe state. There's no point going to New York and places like that, there are about but, 10. But right now, New York is also not sure. Yes, yes, but basically, you know, yeah. basically. There are about 10 states which are in the blue cap. So the fight is for the others. So I would think she has to go for someone in the, what you call the East, East Coast. Somewhere there, which balances the ticket with the West Coast uh, California setup. So somebody from there. Uh, there are attractive women candidates, but I don't think at the present moment they'll have two women, president and vice president. So they like to think of a male, white male from Gavin the Newsom. Uh, no, Gavin Newsom from, Cali from uh, California. Yeah. So he, he will not be a contender because you can't have two from California. That's out of the question. So we have to be someone from the eastern side of America and probably a white male because then only you can balance the mm. ticket. Like Governor Shapiro, for example, my yeah. from uh, Philadelphia. So I think somebody from Rust Belt, mm -hmm. definitely. And um, I think so far, like with my last night discussion, um, most of the actually I spoke with uh, a Republican converted now <laughs> into the Democrat side. Now so confused uh, by what's now because he's actually a, a pro Bush but an anti Trump Republican who has now switched sides. And he was saying somebody like um, Shapiro from uh, Pennsylvania. So you, the governor. So you, you, you might get that uh, this uh, you know white male uh, middle age vote, which is crucial, uh, and uh, that the Democratic Party is actually losing that vote. The working class is the working class, right? Uh, so um, indeed, you know somebody like the governor Shapiro would be best option, and not somebody like. Uh, News and etc. from the from California area, which is destructive. Do you think, uh, Doctor, uh, with regard to now earlier when it was uh, Trump and uh, Biden, the conversation very much pivoted around the fact of their age. Both of those candidates are old males, are old white males. That was basically it, and it they were not appealing. Uh, 
uh, to the younger voter bases, whether in the Republican Party nor the Democratic Party. Now you have a very young candidate on one side, uh, if it is Kamala Harris, and on this side again, now the old guy is going to be Donald Trump. 78. Uh, 78, exactly. And he, if he becomes the president by the time he ends his four years, he will be exactly the age uh, of, of uh, Joe Biden. And a lot of people are concerned about the fact that Joe Biden was quite okay until he got the presidency and then he went south uh, from that particular point onwards. Uh, doctor, uh, we are running out of time. I'll give you the uh, final word. Do you think the age factor is going to be very detrimental to Donald Trump in a fight with Kamala Harris and someone else. No, I think he's balancing the ticket with Vance. Vance is the future of the Republican Party, as they say. He's young, he comes, he's a hard fighter, he's a typical American success story. So obviously the same type I think he was a Democrat at one particular time, uh, initially when he was a, he was a sweetheart of the Democrats. Uh, suddenly he became a follower of uh, Donald earlier, Trump. Earlier he was very <laughs> critical of Trump, yeah. but now he's made up for all that. I so think Trump himself was a, he wanted he, he was a Democrat, advice, yeah. registered yeah. Democrat. But now what has happened is that you'll have to find another Vance, that type of person, and probably from the Rust Belt or from that other area, uh, like Virginia, you know, that, that area where you have to capture votes and so that that person will be an uh, addition to the uh, California-based vote uh, that Democrats will get. Uh, doctor, uh, this entire U.S. presidential election has turned out to be something very interesting uh, for news junkies like us. Uh, this is this is this is what we live for because every single time whenever there is such a big story that is ha uh, occurring from a, a former president being shot to suddenly an incumbent president dropping out and all these kinds of things, this phrase is gonna shape up. I don't know uh, what will happen next Saturday because you know two Saturdays we got really big stories coming out from the United States. Um, so, in a situation like that, do you think the Democratic Party, and do you still believe the fact that earlier what you said, the Republicans will actually prevail this time around and get the White House? I'm almost sure of that. Uh, what about you, Doug? Very likely. Uh, I think now it is more likely than... Um, Even with Kamala Harris? I think so. All right, uh, we have to leave it at that. Uh, uh, Dr. Sarat Amadugumar, our former foreign minister, and also Dr. Udhar Soisa, attorney at law, and uh, uh, the lecturer for public international law at the Banda Naika Center for International Studies. Appreciate it. I'm sure that we will be coming back very soon to have another discussion with regard to this election and also uh, what's happening all around the world. Every other election has been completely shadowed by this one and these events that is occurring in the United States. Well, that's all the time we have for you. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, also uh, on, on a note that we are just celebrating, other than 24 is celebrating, uh, if you would have seen earlier in the morning, 10 years on air. So thank you very much for being a source of strength and giving us the number one position in news broadcasting here in Sri Lanka and helping us to come to that top position. We take that responsibility very seriously and we will continue and we will promise you to bring world-class quality programming on this channel other than 24. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.